Okay, thank you, thank you very much, Simone. Uh, uh, I uh, will focus on some aspect um, that we deal with uh, during the, the the construction of the of the uh, book of the edited book. Wait a moment, I have to save a file. Okay, uh, but first of all, I have to say I have to thank. Simone for the wonderful job that we have done together. We this book appear. I mean, we uh, decided to to um, realize uh, this book that started from a conference that we realized almost two years ago, and has been a very long journey. I have to say, in in this journey, a lot of things happened. And uh, Simone always has been uh, uh, very comprehensive about the 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 um, uh, my situation, and I really would like to thank you him uh, thank him uh, publicly because it had been uh, an effort. I mean, I know that uh, it had be, been difficult for him uh, to to uh, cope with all my difficult problems that I had in this la in the last year. So I thank you very very much, Simone. Uh, but from, I mean, and also um, because we worked uh, uh, with two hours of time difference, that, that, that's been also uh, um, sometimes it's been problematic also because he, I obliged him to wake up really early in the morning, I have to say. Uh, and uh, so anyway, I'm very proud of the work that we have done together. Um, so, <clears throat> starting from the presentation that Simone has realized, um, I have to say that from one hand, um, exploring the extent of the pandemic in, in our societies has meant dealing constantly with different analyses on a planetary scale. Our work aimed to emphasize a multi-level and multi-approach view, as you have seen. Um, and this multi-approach view, uh, in particular, resulted in connecting different sociologies and their methods, uh, framework, and lenses. In the book, there are um, different researches realized with different uh, uh, techniques, uh, methodology, and uh, uh, that's, I think, a point of strength of this publication. Uh, also, because thinking globally, uh, to use the word of uh, Michel Vivirca, means considering globalization, globalization not just as a research object, but also as a theoretical framework, a method of approaching social inquiries and um, of focusing on their global stance and at the same time analyzing uh, its consequences at national, local and even individual subjective level that actually uh, that's what um, emerged from the uh, different chapters uh, uh, in the book. Uh, so starting from these preliminary consideration, we decided to, as Simone said, organize the book around three main axes, uh, inequalities, uh, youth and pandemic and democracy. And we considered mm, these as the most affected aspect hit by the pandemic. And for this reason, the most meaningful to be explained through the lens of uh, sociology of crisis. One of the key aspects of the sociology of crisis, as um, already said, uh, uh, focuses on inequalities. Even more uh, today, when the transitions to an accelerated society is all encompassing and inequalities, precariousness and uncertainty fully characterize the generalized sense of lack of control over our personal and individual lives. These challenges were further counterpunded by uh, for marginalized marginalized group, as we have seen with some of the contributions uh, uh, we choose for the for the edited volume, such as uh, racial and ethnic minorities, uh, migrants, uh, Roma, and uh, individual with sub um, disabilities. Um, and in the in the last few years, let's starting from the the the, the 
pandemic, the entanglement uh, inequalities, COVID-19 pandemic has been at the core of the sociological debate, prompting for, uh, from interdisciplinary and transnational approaches. First, the articulation of inequalities uh, lies in individual potential exposure to the virus and its different uh, uh, responses, contributing factors such as age and pre-existing conditions are interwined with economic resources, sociocultural status, working conditions, and spatial contexts. Uh, available living spaces with low density, density showed how privacy became an essential class privilege. And this is something that emerged from some of the contributions. Um, in addition, the, the pandemic exacerbated pre-existing global inequalities uh, related to the systematic inequalities that lie in the global lack of distribution of wealth and material resources and that are differently reflected in each national and regional context. These inequalities encounter different national healthcare structure, functionalities, and, accessib and accessibility. Depending on how resourceful or poor, scarce, and inefficient the public health was, each country coped with the pandemic and its impact in the most vulnerable po population differently. Mm, I was thinking about the um, chapter of um, the uh, researcher Saka Sakakibara from Japan that focuses uh, on these uh, aspects um, from um, an analysis of data from the Japan um, National Statistical um, Center. Moreover, during the COVID-19 pandemic, long periods of state of ex exceptions uh, plunged individual and community into a resigned sense of distance between their daily lives and the direction of society. Also, this aspect comes very uh, often uh, um, out uh, from uh, several chapters that uh, deal with uh, different regional contexts. And that's something that I see very meaningful uh, for the overall uh, volume. Uh, for this reason, the, the, the volume, as I said, aimed uh, to reflect to, um, on all crucial aspects that emerged during the COVID-19 pandemic, to encompass many forms of inequalities with an original and in-depth analysis of youth which we believe must be at the core of any so new sociological understanding of the global crisis. I thought sociology posit the central role of youth as a major and radical transformation agent in society. Uh, few collective work uh, has focused on particular phenomena that may have reshaped new generations since 1990. Uh, tw sorry, 2020. Um, Finally, the impact of a, a crisis generated by a global disaster such as the COVID-19 pandemic also affect democracy and collective decision-making processes. After the COVID-19 pandemic that shocked the world, we have entered in a different area of uh, hmm, global crisis in which institutions such as public health, so science and medicine, politics and the media have become the most crucial and at the same time, the most challenged and distrusted. And uh, that's come from some of the uh, chapter as well. And that's uh, maybe the occasion to, uh, for for instance, uh, Ruben and uh, um, other uh, contributors that are uh, here now to, to um, say something. Um, radicalization and polarization are two of the main consequences that the rise of a right-wing populist bring on the stage. Has happened during the, month, the months after the peak of contagion worldwide, when the far right all over the world tried to monopolize the debate and the streets demos on the measure imposed uh, by the states to restart activities, collective lives, work and tourism. A democratic crisis is not necessary, we have to say uh, this, uh, that's very important, necessary synonymous with a crisis of participation. 
We have seen that uh, after the most terrible moments of the pandemic crisis, a large participation in demonstration all around the world. In the uh, radicalization processes in the past, uh, during the 60s or 70s in, of the last century, um, can be considered, uh, no, sorry, if the ra radicalization process in the past, uh, during the 60s and 70s of the last century, uh, can be considered as an inclusive radicalization, uh, what we witnessed during the pandemic period represents an exclusionary radicalization. The, the case of Vox and feminists in Antonio's chapter is a perfect example about this. So I would stop here and maybe we can uh, open the debate uh, around the um, issues and inquiries that uh, came out uh, during this first half uh, an hour of uh, um, debate. Thank you. <laughs>